The inferior alveolar nerve block is the most commonly used anesthetic technique in dentistry. It's also known as the standard mandibular block or the Halstead approach. It is indicated when we are carrying out procedures on either one or multiple mandibular teeth in one quadrant. As well, it is indicated for procedures on the lingual soft tissue or the buccal soft tissue anterior to the first molar. For surgery on the molars, a separate buccal nerve block is required. The nerve anesthetized by this block is the inferior alveolar, which innervates the pulps of the mandibular teeth in that quadrant from the third molar to the central incisor. The buccal periodontium anterior to the first molar is also anesthetized through its innervation by the mental nerve. In administering this block, we often anesthetize the lingual nerve and therefore the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and lingual soft tissues as well. The objective of this technique is to place the needle tip above the mandibular foramen into the sulcus just behind the lingula. This is where the inferior alveolar nerve inserts into the mandibular canal. The lingual nerve lies just anteriorly and medially and is often anesthetized along with the inferior alveolar nerve. You begin by looking at the anterior board of the ramus, which is shown here, and feeling the greatest depth, which is the coronoid notch of the external oblique ridge. This point should be palpated with your thumb or finger and the greatest depth noted because that will correspond to the height of injection, which is usually between the midpoint to height of your fingernail. The next stage is to palpate the internal oblique ridge, which is the next prominence as you move your finger or thumb in medially, and that should be palpated, a mental note made at that point, and then your finger or thumb again withdrawn laterally, pulling the soft tissue landmark with you. It is just medial to the internal oblique ridge that the needle will be inserted. At this point, you're ready for needle insertion. The needle is advanced just behind the lingula until it hits the mandibular sulcus. It is at this point that the mandibular nerve inserts into its foramen. The patient needs to open her mouth wide, and the first point that is palpated is the anterior border of the ramus, and specifically the coronoid notch of the external oblique ridge, and that is where my finger is resting right now. You then should move your finger in medially to feel the internal oblique ridge and that marks an important landmark because it is just medial to this point where the needle will be inserted. Then by retracting your finger out laterally again and resting on the external oblique ridge you expose the pterygotemporal depression which is this depression shown at the end of the probe here. It is within this depression that the needle will be inserted. The medial border of the depression is the pterygomandibular raphe and again the needle insertion will be within that depression, lateral to the raphe. The height of insertion will be roughly the midpoint of your fingernail, anywhere from the midpoint to the height of your fingernail, and that determines the correct height of insertion. After palpating the landmarks, you will be inserting the needle into the pterygotemporal depression. The needle is brought in from the contralateral side, and insertion point is directly there, and advance slowly until you go 25 millimeters. Once bone is hit, you withdraw slightly, you aspirate, and slowly begin to inject a full cartridge of local anesthetic unless you are following with a buccal nerve block, in which case you should inject three quarters of the cartridge. The needle is now passing through mucosa, a thin portion of buccinator muscle, loose connective tissue, and adipose tissue. It lies lateral to the medial pterygoid muscle and the sphenomandibular ligament, and medial to the ramus of the mandible. If you contact bone too soon, in other words, significantly less than 25 millimeters, you will need to redirect the syringe and carry out the indirect technique. This is accomplished by withdrawing the syringe slightly, moving the barrel more medially over contralateral canine or incisors, and advancing again until bone is contacted. If you do not contact bone after 25 millimeters and the needle is almost buried, you should redirect by withdrawing somewhat, but not completely, and move the barrel of the syringe more laterally and advancing again until bone is contacted. You should repeat this procedure as necessary.